Hello everyone and welcome to Backseat VR Developer, the show where we are playing virtual reality titles alongside the developers that have created them. My name is Alex VR and I am one half of Between Realities and joined alongside me here is the other half of Between Realities, Skiva. Hey Skiva, how you doing man? I'm great, man. Here to play another game with another developer. Super excited. Ah, I am excited as well, my friend, because today we are being joined with Anthony. We're being joined by Anthony from Overrun Games, the developers of Arc Axer. What's up, Anthony? Hey, how's it going, guys? Ah, so good. Thank you for joining us, man. This is going to be fun. Definitely. I'm, I'm super excited. Yes. Do you often get to see people play your creation or is this kind of like a, a unique treat? I mean, uh, I, I obviously do it in person a lot with friends and family, but uh, I don't think I've ever done like a live thing over a stream before, so this will be a, a whole new experience for me. Sweet, man. This is definitely going to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, I jumped in right before the stream got started and kind of pushed my way through the tutorial a little bit just so we could kind of get into uh, the meat and potatoes of Arcaxer. So before we kind of dive into this crazy tall tower that I'm looking at. Um, why don't you give us a little bit of background, right? Tell us about Overrun Games and tell us what uh, what Arcaxer is all about. Sure thing. So Overrun Games is mostly me and uh, my friend Aaron. Um, I do all the programming and he does all the art. Um, so that's, we're kind of a duo. Um, we've been making games since we uh, went to school together at Cal State Chico in Northern California. Uh, we graduated in 2015 and then we just kind of been um, working on VR stuff ever since then. Uh, we had a project called Wave Magic we worked on in 2016, um, which was another RPG that kind of slowly evolved into uh, what you're seeing here, um, which is Arcaxer. Uh, this is a game we've been working on for the past, I'm going to say, two and a half years. And this is a turn based RPG uh, with a third person overworld. Um, but first person battles. So you explore the overworld with this kind of like third person God view uh, kind of perspective. And then when you go into battles, the game switches to first person um, and then the turn based. So on your turn, you're actually aiming your spells and using your weapons, trying to hit the enemy. And then when you run out of actions, it goes to the enemy turn. The enemy uh, will shoot bullets at you, use various attacks, and you have to dodge the attacks with your head. Glorious. So this is, a, this is like a true RPG experience then that you guys have been going for here. Yep, we've got a, you got item, you got equips to pick up, you got new spells to learn, uh, passives. There's three different classes. We have the fighter, the mage, and the thief, all with their own level up abilities. And as you kind of progress through the game and the story, you'll uh, learn new abilities, get stronger so you can fight the better bosses and uh, eventually make your way all the way up to the top of the tower and fight the final boss. Upload VR audience, what do you guys <laughs> see right here? Huh? Come on, that's too yep, good. That's... The power button. <laughs> yep, that's the that's the, actually the main character. He's just uh, the upload VR. Uh, that's their new avatar. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about the story here. What's what's our hero up to? Sure. So this whole game takes place in a in a simulation. Where all the all the humans and the entities in this world are generated from people's like social media profiles on the internet, um, and then basically there's this huge tower that all these entities are trying to climb. There's apparently something, some kind of treasure or something special at the top, so everyone's trying to get to the top. Um, however, the tower is full of these entities called toxins, which are generated from like the just the worst personalities on the internet. So. All, all the the most toxic and uh, just thing terrible things people would say that um, they might keep anonymous or uh, disconnected from like their real selves on the internet those get generated as these monsters and uh, you're basically trying to fight them make your way up the tower to uh, kind of see what's going on and figure out all the mysteries of this world and what's at the top wow that's a really cool story I that like is that. a cool story. <laughs> So Thank here's you. one of the aspects that right away I thought really kind of separated Arc Axer from a lot of the other experiences that I've had in VR, and it is this. Boom. Look at that. I am now in first person, and you can switch in real time between first person and third person viewpoints. Was this uh, something that you guys kind of had in mind from the very beginning, or was this a feature that got added later? How did this come about? 
Yeah, so originally um, I wanted all the overworld traversal stuff to just be done in third person, so that's kind of how I designed the game. Um, but for fun, I, I wanted the ability to at least view the world around you in first person, because I just thought, you know, that might be cool to be running around the world and be like, oh, what's what's this, this look like if I'm, you know, a proper scale? Um, but because we added that button, people in our Discord were just like, hey, how do you how do you move around after you switch to the first person perspective? And I was like, well, we, we didn't really design the game for you to move around like that. But we, got, we had so many people um, keep asking us, like, hey, can you add the ability to move in first person? I eventually just said, okay, fine. Uh, I added the feature. And uh, yeah, now you can freely switch between first and third person in the nice. world. Nice. I will say, uh, the game, since the game wasn't originally designed to be played in first person, the overworld, um, you will run into things like if you start a cutscene, the game will pop you back into third person because mm -hmm. like the dialogue boxes and the cutscene animations weren't really designed to be seen that way. Uh, but other than that, yeah, you, you can you can run around and uh, do anything you anything you want in first person. I think it's really cool that you listened to uh, what what your what your customers wanted, right? And you implemented yeah. some of those changes. Um, I think a lot of devs could could learn some stuff from that. So that's great. Good job. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, obviously, we're we're a really small team, so uh, I think a big advantage of that is that you know there's there's not a lot of bureaucracy with adding features, and if if somebody wants something, I think it's a cool idea. Most of the time, I can I can add it in a day. So. I love being able to like throw some fireballs and then go in with the sword and then come back out. Like I feel like I can switch between the style of attack just like so effortlessly here. Mm -hmm. What's your uh, go-to style? Are you more of a ranged player? Do you like to get in close? What do you think? Uh, that's a good question. I, I think I like the mage the best. I just, um, I don't know, I just really like the, the feel of, of casting the spells, and uh, the, the mage definitely gets some some really interesting ones later on. Um, and I, I often play mages in, like, MMOs and other RPGs, too, mm -hmm. so I've, I've always been kind of a wizard guy. Now, is this, uh, was this, like, you know, when you were designing this, did you know that you wanted to make an RPG from the very beginning? Like, have you been inspired by other games to kind of follow in their footsteps and to make a game that is like that, that you can play in VR? That one looks bad. Oh, yeah. I've, uh, RPGs are definitely my, like, favorite kind of single-player game. Um, I've always played, you know, like, Final Fantasies and personas and you know all those popular jrpg style games and when i made this game i really wanted to kind of give people the like a really immersive feeling of like what if i was that jrpg hero and like what what would that feel like um you know in vr so that was kind of the the goal with this game to give you those like really epic moments you get in in rpgs and, and have you really feel it I love it. That tower is quite tall. Oh, I died. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> I was not Ouch. expecting to die there. Uh, what class are you playing? As? I went with the thief. Okay, so um, at the beginning of the game, you you learn that one of the rules of this world is that unless you have hacks, which are like the spells of this game, which are kind of like a, a special ability that only the main character can learn. Um, Usually when entities hurt each other in this world, they take damage themselves. So one of the mechanics of the game is that when you use your weapons, it actually hurts you as well. Um, but I the game see. is designed around that. So basically, unless you're playing the fighter, which gets a special ability called Hack and Slash, which allows you to hurt enemies with your weapons and use action points instead, um, you're kind of supposed to use your weapons as a way to finish enemies off. So anytime you kill an enemy, you get half of your action points back, which kind of lets you chain your turn together. So if you can kill a lot of enemies in a row, you can keep your turn going. Um, so what you're kind of supposed to do is trade health as a way to finish enemies off. So nice. what you might want to do is like toss a few spells. If you see an enemy gets low, go in with your weapon, use some health to finish it off. You'll get half your action points back, and then maybe you can finish off another enemy. Um, and if you manage to kill every enemy in one turn, you actually get an EXP bonus at the end, so you can level up a little faster. Nice. 
is exp experience or is it exp or is it xp how do you feel like i feel like there's so many variations of experience and xp points and all of that <laughs> oh i know rpgs have uh, a lot of things to keep track of i feel like we we tried to keep the the combat systems in this game kind of simple um there's you don't have to keep track of like mana or manage any system like that you you attack, you dodge, and uh, <laughs> these dodge. training stations are pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, what's so, going on oh with my... these? So uh, we have these little mini games you can play. So if you find yourself having trouble in the stack, which is the the big tower, you can play these mini games to raise your stats. Um, and the treadmill in particular is really useful because it raises your max HP. So if you're, for example, fighting a boss and uh, you're just having a lot of trouble with him, you can go run on the treadmill for a few minutes, raise your max HP way up, and that'll let you take a few more pits. Nice. That's cool. So you can just train any time on these mini games, and they'll actually increase your stats in, for the other aspects of the game. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. right. We actually, uh, we've had some people in our Discord go really wild with them. Uh, this one guy... Um, he would like run on the treadmill for like hours, <laughs> like actual <laughs> hours, just run on this treadmill in this game. And he, his max HP was just absolutely massive. It was hilarious. So these and there's no cap like, on it. These are like, oh, there's oh, no these cap. Are, That's cool. Yeah. Uh, these are like side quests. Um, so you can walk in here, you can, you'll get little objectives and like, uh, raising spells to certain levels or collecting items. And if you come in here and turn them in, you get, uh, extra spells and, items and bonuses and stuff like that cool so are these like kind of passively like active and then i just go do it and i come back and i can get rewarded for it yeah yes. yeah so for example this one just says to raise fireball and frostbolt to uh, a certain level and if okay. you do that anytime come in you'll you'll get the frost fireball as nice. a reward. now what if i want to order uh, a burning hate here with the whiskey the coffee uh the butane um and a dirty look you know well, <laughs> 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 that's a good question i you know god i haven't looked at that board in a long time um aaron our artist likes to hide all these really funny messages in in our in our environments and textures everywhere so oftentimes if you just run around the world and, and read things yeah, you'll find all sorts of stupid jokes that he's put everywhere <laughs> i love it <laughs> <laughs> burning hate he does have some great mm. cocktail names there you guys are onto something oh yeah i had ordered the burning hate that sounds delicious <laughs> yeah. i need that dirty look in my life i don't get enough <laughs> <laughs> all right so i am not going to kill myself this time i'm going to oh. uh, do a better job of throwing my spells and then finishing them off with the melee attacks Right. So just, you know, keep an eye on your health. Uh, try to use your, your melee attacks sparingly, mostly as a finisher. And then um, I think pretty soon here when you level up, you'll get the Thief's core ability, which is Ninja Instinct, which is uh, very unique, which is where you can actually summon your weapons on the enemy turn and swing your sword to reflect enemy projectiles. That's what up. I want to do. That's that's why yes. I picked the Thief. I imagine knocking mm -hmm. these things back. Yeah. Look at this uh, cute doge. <laughs> you guys holding know, uh, or what? Holding to the moon or is that is that what's happening here? I, I don't have any dogecoin. Um, <laughs> I don't think Aaron does either. I, th I think because uh, th there's a big internet kind of theme with our game, he was like, yeah, I, I got to hide a, a couple classic memes in here somewhere. Yeah, right. that's smart. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. I mean, if this is like, you know, all of the terribleness that is spawned out of the toxicity online in the future, <laughs> it only makes right. sense. <laughs> yeah, you definitely got to have a few of those in there. So today we're playing this game on the Valve Index. Um, what other headsets uh, can people play this on? Is there a mobile version of this game? Yeah, we're on the, uh, you can play in the Oculus Quest 1 or 2. Uh, we're on a lot of the Chinese headsets like the, uh, the Pico Neo 3. Uh, we're on the Chiu, we're on the Nolo Sonic, and then obviously we're on Steam VR. So any Steam VR compatible headset, you can play this with PC VR. XP bonus, one turn bonus. Oh, you got it. One turn. <laughs> Boom. Ooh, level, level five. Up. Let's get it. Look at that. So now, do I need to equip my new skill, or do I need to unlock it, or will that, will is it kind of automatically work? Well, uh, if you open the menu, you can go to your passives, and we'll see if you have enough points to equip it yet. Go to passives here, ninja instinct. Yeah, just one more. So how do I get another point? Level. 
a level. So one. every two every two levels, you'll get a, a passive point, and then um, you can also find items that will enhance the amount of passives you can equip as well. So keep an eye out for those. Get anything good? Bye bye. Man, spell casting with the haptic suit feels pretty amazing. <laughs> I know the like like I was saying um, when we met earlier. I I love playing this game with the uh, with the B haptic suit now. It's like my preferred way to play this for sure. It feels haptics, really good. Haptics and anything just add so much more to a game. You know, the visuals and the sound and virtual reality is one thing, but being able to feel things, it's a whole other sense. So. Oh yeah. More immersion. And then, you know, like I said, the, the point of this game was I wanted you to feel like a like an RPG hero, and you you literally feel everything with the suit, so it, it definitely adds a whole lot. Can I avoid that? I must be able to, right? Yeah, it's it's just very big, so you gotta do a, a little bit of dancing around to get out of the way for that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool because uh, it is turn-based, but with that combat system that you guys have in place, it feels alive. Like, it doesn't feel like I'm just, mm -hmm. like, sitting there waiting for something to happen, you know? Like, it does feel engaging. Right. I did, uh, I kind of wanted to give the game almost a, like, a bullet hell feel on the enemy turns, especially, uh, when you get farther in the game and enemies start to become what's called linked, which is where enemies will be able to use their attacks at the same time. Mm. Uh, you'll... It definitely feels like a, almost like a bullet hell in 3D. Preemptive attack, very nice. Oh, two gnomes. These gnomes are so funny. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I don't... <laughs> you know, it's funny. They, they barely have any animations. They literally just kind of walk place and bounce around, but I love them so it's much. It's perfect. Yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> They were, uh, they were actually originally a, a super late game enemy, um, but people loved them so much, so I was like, I, I gotta have these show up earlier on. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Thank you for that. So we make sure Definitely. we get it in, in this uh, playthrough. It's important. Yep. We need the gnomes. And then uh, I think we're still on the first five floors here. So basically, every five floors of the dungeon, the, uh, the pool of enemies you can run into will change. So right now we're getting like imps and gnomes, turrets and casters, I think. And then once you hit, I think it's either floor five or six, you'll run into a whole new pool of enemies here. Sweet. Another cool thing about uh, the casting is that you kind of like curve the fireballs after you've, you've sent them out. So there is like a, an element of like accuracy and aiming to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically the, uh, the spells seek your targets. Um, but they travel with the velocity of your hand, so the faster your hand is moving, um, the faster the spell will go and the more damage it will do. And then because of the like the auto-seeking they do, you can actually kind of like move your hand in a way to try to curve spells around. Like eventually you'll run into enemies that are like holding up shields and stuff, and you'll want to like try to get your spells to go around the shields. And it's a it's a whole other kind of skill you have to master in this game. So that's. Do I get anything for destroying that, or just damage for, for facing it? <laughs> no, it's you know. You know, I actually just added um, the ability to even destroy those. Um, originally, were they were just an obstacle. I should have it give you some money or something. Yeah, like a maybe like a quick little XP bonus. You know, like a little yeah, like 50 XP or something. A little XP or money or something. Yeah. Um, because uh, we were doing some play testing, and I noticed a lot of players would just run up to them and try to use the attack and then it wouldn't do anything and I was mm -hmm. like okay well we definitely got to make it yeah, so you can everybody blow wants up. to hit that um I feel like I move so much faster in first person yeah it's it should be the same I think it's just the move speed in general is really fast in this game because it's in third person so uh -huh. that when you go to first person it feels like you're really zooming yeah it does I like it I love being mm -hmm. able to switch so in this situation, what would you do? Would you be would you be taking this guy out to get the extra XP or would you be advancing up the staircase? I, I tend to rush the staircase. Mm -hmm. um, usually if if I don't have to fight an enemy, usually I, I won't. Um, uh, you but you know, he <laughs> got you anyway. But you know, depending on what kind of player you are, some people just, they, they want to fight every enemy so they can get all the XP and money that they can before they get to the boss, so. Yeah, for me, especially because I've played the game so much, uh, I, I can usually fight the bosses pretty underleveled. I'll usually just rush the staircases. Have you played a ton of this? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> ex 
especially since you know we, we go to events and conferences and stuff and especially when, if we have like a booth with the game set up I'll, I'll have to be sitting in there playing it all day to, to show the game off to people and <laughs> as a result I'll just end up playing through the whole story over and over and over again <laughs> is there anybody that you know of that's better than you at this game or are you the king oh oh yeah it's literally everyone on our discord is better than me at this game uh i am not as good at my own video game than i should be <laughs> does that like is does that like sting you know is there like a part of that that you're like ah oh, man like i should be the best and i'm not or are you happy to uh, hand it off y you know i'm i'm happy to hand it off i think the, the fact that people are so dedicated to this game just kind of shows me that, like, you know, maybe maybe I made something fun and I should be proud that uh, people can play this better than I can. Okay, um, that was stupid. Oh, well, that's okay. I think you hit a checkpoint, <laughs> so you'll be able to pop right back up there. Um, every five floors in the stack, you hit a checkpoint, so when you go back to that, to that uh, block, you'll teleport back nice. up to that every multiple of five. So that was a puzzle floor. So the puzzle floors are designed so that usually you have to interact with the world some way with your with your big overworld hands. Mm. Um, so for that puzzle in particular, uh, what you're gonna want to do? Well, do you want me to spoil it? I guess, or do you want to try to figure it out? Um, let's uh, no, keep talking. Okay. So those lasers can actually be blocked with your hand. Um, oh. So when you walk up there, if you want to try to get the item at the end, and it's a very good item, I do recommend you go get it. It's a uh, probably my favorite item in the game. Um, so it's a little tricky because the camera moves when you move, so you gotta kind of line it up properly. But if you kind of block your hands over the lead... Oh, is it? Uh-oh. Oh, hold on. Oh, it's, it's, is it not blocking? Oh, uh-oh, I think we've run into a bug here. We might have. You told us earlier yeah, that- Yeah, uh, I just- You don't have I just up, at the at the yeah, office, right? I, I, I don't have an index. I did not know that for some reason the index hands aren't blocking. Ah! Maybe you can just run through. Ah! <laughs> oh, no. oh, that's a shame. That uh, item is really cool. That's funny. All right, I'm, that's that's going in my notes right now. That's great. Yep. That's why yeah. we're here, everybody. We're here yep. to break yeah. all of these developers' games. <laughs> I need I need to get an index apparently, because um, yeah, your your hands are supposed to block that laser so that you can walk through there. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad we did this. Yes, so am I. There's a, a lot of, uh, maybe there's a lot of Index users since the newest update who have been killing themselves <laughs> yeah. trying to get that. A lot of, yeah, a lot of people I got there are like, how do you do this? So, so we're talking about all these headsets. What's your favorite headset to play this game with? Uh, for me, I think it's got to be the Quest 2. Um, I usually play the standalone version. I really like being untethered, and I just like the ability to just kind of load the app up and go. Yeah. Um, so for for me, it's I think I think it's got to be the Quest 2. But um, yeah, honestly, uh, any headset as long as it's comfortable, uh, I'll I'll play it with anything. Was it a challenge to get this thing to run on the Quest One or what? Uh, yeah, well, it was our first Quest game. Um, we actually got the Quest pretty early from Oculus uh, because we were developers working with them. Um, so I, I actually was able to start optimizing this for the Quest pretty early on, um, which was super helpful. Um, but, you know, as a lot of other developers know, the, the Quest 1, um, you know, it's... It's pretty old now, and it, the limitations are kind of hard to, to work with. Uh -huh. um, but it, it does work on the Quest 1, and uh, obviously even better on the Quest 2. What kind of uh, PC do you want to have to run Arc Uh Well, because this was designed for the Quest, um, you don't actually need a, a super strong PC. I think our, um, our target specs on Steam are like the original like oculus rift cv1 specs like a geforce 970 uh wow so, impressive yeah yeah it's it's designed for mobile hardware so you you really don't need a strong pc to run this that's good Everybody... how, many, how many hours does it take to complete a campaign in this well it definitely depends on uh you know if you're trying to do all the side content or not i think usually most new players it takes them around 15 hours to complete the main story 
And then we just recently added kind of like a post-game story segment that can take anywhere between another like three and five hours. So you can get a good 20 hours of gameplay on your first run through this game. That's a lot of content. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then there's some replayability for, you know, picking up a different class or maybe trying different weapons yep. or strategies. Yeah, there's uh, there's obviously the three main classes. And then we have two what I call challenge classes that kind of change the way up the, the way you play the game a little bit. We have the Dark Knight, which um, instead of learning a set list of moves, it learns um, a random move from any of the other classes in the game uh, every three levels. So it's kind of like a randomized way to play the game if you really want some chaos with, with what you're learning. Um, and then in addition to that, we have the Blue Mage, which uh, kind of almost turns the game into Pokemon, where instead of learning your moves uh, from leveling up, you actually copy them from enemies. So every oh, enemy fun. in the game will have like an ability that you can learn from them by using an ability called Copy Bolt. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, I am curious, when I'm engaging these uh, enemies in the dungeon, I have the opportunity to kind of like get that that attack in first do they attack first if they get the jump on me it's not always so if you get a preemptive strike like you just did um you'll always go first but if the enemy attacks you first then it goes off of your speed stat so if any of the enemies has more speed than you then they'll attack first um, but if your speed is higher then you'll get to go first oh see i really put myself in a position there by swinging so much I hurt myself. You should check it. to see if you uh, have any potions in your inventory. Yeah, definitely. You got the heartbeat and 11 health potions. That'll do it. Ah, I love you. You got full health. That's and then uh, you actually have a, you got a frostbolt module there if you want to learn a new spell. Yes. Uh, you go to inventory. You actually have a you know, restore a whole bunch of stuff. See that frostbolt mod module there under items? Oh, here it is. Use. What's oh. that? Go now to loadout. Adds it, yep, and then I can add here. Sweet. Just a now the left hand. Boom. And you can switch between spells. I think it doesn't like cost a turn or something to switch your spell in mid fight. No, you can you can switch at will. You just move the uh the thumbstick or touchpad you're playing on in, in any direction and it'll switch to that spell. Cool. So and this is a healing spell, restore, right? So I can like switch yeah. to that, drop, drop a heal if I need it. Yep. Yeah. And then I think you should be able to equip the um a ninja instinct now under passives. Oh, I'm way ahead of you on that one. Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I got that third point, I immediately went to it. I should probably try it in a fight. Yeah, right? try it out. So there's not really a hard and fast rule about what you can uh, reflect. Usually any projectile that is a sphere shape, usually you can reflect back. But if the enemy's like shooting a laser beam at you or like a, a breath of fire, that's usually not something you could uh, reflect with your sword. Oh, I hit the shield there. That was bad. Very nice. Is that adrenaline rush? Not enough AP. Whoa. Oh. Sweet dodge. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Very nice. Oh, that did seek him out. Oh no, I want that one. Oh, oh I can't, I can't charge this guy because he's flying, right? Yeah. Yep. So, as far as your development phase goes, are you, um, are you continuing to work and add on more and more to this game, or is it kind of done? What, what do we, what can we expect in the future here? Yeah, we actually have a, we have a few more things we want to add to this game, um, and then after, I think we have like one more secret boss we're working on. Um, we're playing a little bit around with, with multiplayer, um, but we're not totally sure if that would be something we want to add to this game or maybe have it possibly be a feature if we did a sequel. Mm, I like the sounds of multiplayer. <laughs> I was kind of wondering how it could be done, um, mm -hmm. but being able to share these kinds of experiences with people are it's always better in my opinion. Definitely. Um, when you get farther in this game, you, you actually start gaining allies you can summon, um, and they'll appear on your left and right, so... Oh, great. Um, pretty much, people that have played the game and seen the allies will be like, oh, I feel like that could easily just be, uh, you know, my buddy sitting next to me shooting spells. 
that would be pretty oh. fun. And then you guys are running around in dungeons together. Yep. Yeah, especially uh, as a quest game too. Like I feel like anything that is social on the quest is a slam dunk. Definitely. So that's um, it's definitely a top, uh, top of my list feature. I'm I'm working on. I would love to see some multiplayer here. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, me too. Back into the first person, just cruising. I'm flying in first person. This has got to be. But, uh, what, what floor are we on right now? That's a good question. Tell us a little bit about the loot system, because um, I obviously I never know quite what I'm going to get when I pick up a treasure chest. Yeah, so um, basically every block of the dungeon, so we're in the first block right now, which is called bottom block, which is the easiest one. Uh, every block's going to have its own loot table uh, with increasingly rare loot. Uh, there's multiple tiers of rarity, so you have like your trash, your whites are commons, your greens uncommons, blues rares, uh, purples are epics, and then we have red, which is like the highest uh, rarity in the game. So anytime you open a chest or beat an enemy, you have a chance of getting any of these items from the from the loot table. And uh, those can include weapons, equips, uh, new spells, uh, you know, potions, all that good stuff. I need to find a staircase. That's what I need. Oh. There we go, baby. Nice. Uh, there's actually an item you can buy in the shop. Um, called the compass which makes it so that if you press the a button while you're running around it'll have this arrow pop up uh next to your character and it points to where the staircase is oh that's a good that's a good one nice uh so this floor you'll notice there's a little cage around the stairs um and for these floors you actually have to clear all the enemies out before the cage disappears yeah that's that's what i would have guessed i think uh I, I might need to add a little text box on there that explains that because I have noticed some players get to those, those yeah, cages. And... They can figure it out. <laughs> Listen, if you're a yeah. gamer, figure it out. Yeah, I, I figured most people would be like, "Yeah, I probably just need. I need to run around and do something." Obviously, you know, this oh, is a game where you fight really enemies. Good. I'm guessing you played Fire on your uh, your last playthrough. I probably did. <laughs> yes, I did. I did play Fighter. Yeah. Come on. Oh, is it my turn again? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Eve. Are those guys Shredder, by the way? That was Shredder, right? <laughs> what, what is it, Shredder? <laughs> yeah. What, is, what are those dudes called? The the super dudes with the with the with the gray like. Oh mask? yeah, yeah. That, that definitely looks like Shredder. That's there. Shredder. Uh, <laughs> um, I think so. Fun fact: that original model, I think Aaron made as a um. I think he was like trying to do his own like fan <laughs> skin. <laughs> um, and when I was originally working on this game, I, I just needed more models uh, to use for like enemy variety. And I saw that on his art station. I was just like, can I just like rename it and use it in my game? And he's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> was there so uh, was there like um, you know like a particular like vision or style that uh, that he had in mind when he took an approach to kind of how these enemies were gonna look and how the world was gonna look? Um, so other than obviously the game has like a big neon theme, so a lot of neon bright. Uh, cartoony colors. It's supposed to be very computery looking. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, his style is like very painterly, uh, kind of stylized. So just kind of combined his like very painted style with this whole like neon theme we had going on here. Sweet. And like the little imps are like little cute little devil guys, and I, like, I love some wild imps. looking wild looking enemies as you get further into this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. Uh, Definitely as you get up to the higher floors, um, we kind of have this theme that things start to get glitchier and more wild as you go up. Oh, um, nice. Which the, the enemy designs start to get a lot more complex uh, and a lot more difficult as well. Yeah, I can imagine uh, that things get more difficult for sure. Yep. What did, I noticed there was a couple different um, difficulty levels that you can choose, right? Yeah, so you can play uh, easy, normal, medium, or th and I think we called the last difficulty level insane. Um, and that will not it only not only scales up the damage and health that enemies have, but it also scales up the uh, speed of their attacks and how hard it is to actually dodge things. 
Oh, that got me. Ooh. Yeah, those, those spike balls do a lot Yeah, that damage. got me. Well, perfect timing. We are uh, about 35 minutes in here. Man, this... No, well, time flies when you're having fun, it I got to say. This is... Uh, feels like a true RPG, you know? Like, I want to upgrade my items. I want to get further and, and unlock rarer loot. And... Um, I think you guys have done a great job. So thanks a lot for uh, for making this game and joining us to play it today. Definitely. Thanks for having me on. This has been super fun. Yeah. Is there uh, anything else that we should say about Arcaxer before we uh, sign off here, Anthony? Um, I would just say if, if you're a big fan of, of uh, old school RPGs, if you liked playing Final Fantasy when you were younger, uh, definitely give this game a, a try. It's It's a super meaty game, super long. Um, really epic bosses, great soundtrack, and uh, I think you'll have a great time with it. Anthony, Overrun Games. The game is Argaxer. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. For UploadVR.com, I'm Alex VR from Between Realities, and that's Skiva. He's also from Between Realities. Thank you for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure, and we will see you very soon for the next episode of Backseat VR Developer. Have a good one, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.